Colonel Gail Halverson, U.S. Air Force retired, otherwise known as the Candy Bomber. Thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. It's a real honor to be here with you. I well, appreciate that invitation. The honor is all mine. I have to tell you, I have been a longtime admirer of yours, wow. and just uh, I'm so tickled that you could join us today. My honor. How and why did you become the Candy Bomber? Well, I became the Candy Bomber because I knew a bunch of kids in Berlin where the Russians were blockading the free Berliners, all their food and the flying supplies, food, dried eggs, dried potatoes and everything. And uh, they looked down at the kids when they take off and land and they'd circle around to approach the end of the runway, wave at all the airplanes, just in gratitude, mm -hmm. grateful to see them. And uh, before, the, before the war, I got a private pilot license in a competition, and we're flying an, an old airplane and came over the farm in Garland, Utah, and the neighbors were there, and I dropped some candy bars out of that airplane, a little on the sly. But uh, then I remembered that when I got in the Air Force and saw these little kids in Berlin that hadn't had any chocolate or very little for a long time. And so I... Uh, uh, bought a bunch of chocolate bars and put them on parachutes and coming in over the approach end to have a, the air crew chief, the third man of the crew, go back and toss them out the big windows. We'd fly, had C-54 four-engine airplanes and we had flew a lot of coal, the call left flour, and uh, it flew with the escape hatches, two big escape hatches on both sides of the airplane, flew those out to suck out the, the dust and get it under the controls. So the crew chief would go back there and check these candy bars. They help, they help the Air Force guys help me tie them up and uh, check them out the window. And the other guys gave me their candy ration. And uh, we just dropped well over 20 tons uh, for months. 20 tons we got, of candy? Yeah, we, a whole, whole squadron was dropping it. Did your commanding officer know what you were doing? Not at first. And then uh, he called me in one day, I made about three drops. Called me in one day, Halverson, what are you doing over Berlin? And I, oh boy, I'm flying like mad, sir. And I'm not stupid, he said. <laughs> what else have you been doing over Berlin? If you've seen the latest news reports, you're dropping parachutes. You didn't get permission. And then he said, well, it's a good idea to keep doing it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, was, I thought I was going home for a while. <laughs> that wouldn't be all bad. <laughs> so truly, you are the embodiment oh, of the phrase yeah. that says, it is easier to gain forgiveness than permission. That's what I kept saying <laughs> under my breath. <laughs> yeah. but it, well, I, I don't know how long it would have taken to get permission. I did probably got given me permission, but the results of the German paper, the new Berlin Zeitung, mm -hmm. was that saved my neck. I'll bet. So I, I like those newspaper guys. Yeah. <laughs> at, at what point did you realize that your mission to drop candy to these children in Berlin really had significance? Well, when you see, saw the eyes of those kids, uh, I couldn't, when I talked to them, and how they lit up when I said I was going to drop something to them. They just didn't have any candy for a long time. And to think that it's going to come out of the air and the approach into the field of Temple Hall, they, it took me a while to get through the translation. The boy, when they said that, they, they just says, uh, I know sometimes the weather will bother you, but don't ever forget, we won't ever forget that. And, uh, I'm a co-pilot, got a co-pilot and a crew chief, and so they said, you're going to get us in trouble. And I said, I'll take responsibility for those kids or something else. I'd hitchhike to Berlin after three round trips and take movies, and that's how I met the kids. Oh, wow. And uh, so they, they uh, talk about appreciation. <laughs> well, uh, let, me ask, let me ask you this question then. Um, when you got to finally meet these children who yeah. were at the end of the runway, yeah. what was that like? What did well, you feel and what did you feel from them? Well, you know that you can get gratitude from people. 
grown people, and uh, some of us most sincere and depending on the situation. But these kids, and the look in their eye when they would say, would describe opening the cover and seeing that chocolate, and then taking the first bite and putting it back in the cover again, it, it just touched my soul to think that the candy bar could have such an effect, because they didn't have any for a long time. And then to have it coming out of the sky free to them, it was, it, well, it, it kept me going. And then when I got called in, help us, what are you doing, flying, dropping parachutes over Berlin, you got permission? No, sir. And I thought, well, I'm going home early, that's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, the general says that's a good idea. You can keep doing it. Colonel Hahn, yeah. he's a great commander. But, uh, he, you know, you're not supposed to be doing something like that. But when I saw those kids' eyes and, and talked to them, and I just had a few sticks of gum and gave, broke it in pieces and gave to them, how so carefully they took the cover off so they wouldn't break off a piece. Mm. And uh, I said, boy, a few candy bars to sure make these kids a lot happier. Yeah. So that's when I told them. I'd d done that a little bit before in other places, but when I could see that, that was the real. I uh, went to my co pilot and engineer and said, Give me your candy ration. What are you going to do? You are? You're going to get us in trouble. And I said, I'll take responsibility. Give me your candy ration. So I had three, three weeks' candy ration. About how much was that? Oh, three weeks worth. Oh, maybe how many maybe a couple of pounds. Yeah. Not much, but, but but I think I think we had three packages. I would imagine that the crowds at the end of the runway, the children, the yeah. w w just grew and grew and grew as time <laughs> yeah. went on, as the yeah. word spread that you yeah, were dropping candy. They really did. Then we we stopped dropping. The crowd got too big. Mm. The kids afraid of getting them hurt, yeah. so we dropped all over the city randomly coming in. We had. R r navigation stations. We had a pattern flying around the sea, coming in in a stream of aeroplane. We'd drop it over over bombed out parts of the sea, where you see kids and uh, we dropped. My buddies and I dropped 23 tons mm. before we got through. And Gratefully, not all at once. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was, it was bombs it was, it was, away. <laughs> three packages on the first one, but. Uh, the, the, I thought I was going to get sent home early, which wouldn't have been too bad, but yeah. the, uh, the colonel said, just keep doing it, keep me advised. Well, that is And it great. went crazy. Now, it, for, I didn't think that I knew this. In fact, um, you've been known as the candy bomber for so long, I didn't realize yeah. that you really are a rocket scientist. <laughs> yeah. Tell That's me about right. your education and the emphasis in the Air yeah. Force that you took after World War II. Well, I grew up on a small farm in Garland, Utah, and uh, uh, we didn't have money for a, I got a couple of scholarships offered. But I, I, I worked for a couple of years to get enough money to go to school. I went to Utah State University, and it wasn't long after that that I got called to, in the military and, and to, to go to Berlin eventually. And so I, uh, I, I got a scholarship through Civil Air Patrol uh, and CAA earlier before the war for a private pilot license. And then as soon as the war started, I signed up in the military. And uh, went in the Army Air Corps, and so it. Uh, I volunteered. My girlfriend wasn't really writing me good letters. I was stationed in Mobile, Alabama, flying transports at, at uh, South America at the end of the war and before the end of the war, and uh, I, I didn't. Uh, it, prospect for marriage didn't look good right then. Mm. After uh, news broke, why she said, "I'll, I'll marry you." <laughs> I had five, got she five, wanted the candy got five too, great kids, funny. two wonderful daughters, and three boys. Oh, that's great! And, uh, a lot of heck of a lot of grandkids. I don't know how many. Hey, there's somebody's in labor somewhere. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, it's been wonderful. So, so tell me, how did you wind up in uh, rocket science and rocket propulsion there well, in the Air Force? Yeah. Well, at the end of the war, maybe because of my. Uh, thing in Berlin, they, they said, 
uh, you, you're not a regular officer, you know, you're not going to be in the Air Force very long. And I love flying airplanes. I got a flight scholarship before the war mm. for a private pilot license. I, and I, boy, I couldn't have buy, hardly buy the gas. Yeah. And uh, I loved to, just love to fly. And uh, at the end of the war, they, I, they asked for any volunteers that want to stay in the Air Force. And I, I, I knew I could get a, uh, we had a, 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 a community ownership of an airplane out in Utah, and then I could fly that, but I, I like the military airplanes better. And so I... Uh, they go fast. Yeah, they <laughs> go fast. So they said, we, we got to have more Air Force guys stay in. And I was getting out. And uh, so I said, well, my, I, didn't, I haven't got a degree. So you don't have to have a degree anymore. If you haven't got a degree and you're accepted in the competition, the Air Force will send you to school for an engineering degree. And I wanted engineering. And I said, really? I'm a kid from the farm. Not a very big farm. <laughs> Explain that to me. I don't believe it. And they did. They showed me the, reg the new reg. They need more air full dedicated officers in the Air Force. And so they were getting them from the Air Force Academy, a permanent officer. And uh, so they said, we got, we're going to make some temporary officers, permanent officers. You want to stay in and make aviation your career with us? I said, oh, boy, I sure do. Mm. And uh, so I, I got a spot, and the uh, assembly had me get a full-fledged Air Force career out of wow. flying. Well, after the war, I, uh, they said I didn't have a college degree, mm -hmm. but I had a permanent army commission, and that wasn't usual. So they, they said, all you permanent guys we chose to make it a career, well, the Air Force will send you to school and to get a degree, you've got to have a degree in a regular officer. Mm -hmm. I said, gosh, that's easy. And so I... Uh, I had a good record in high school and, and uh, a few quarters of, at Utah State. And so uh, I, they sent me to the university, uh, well, where, Wayne State University, East for heck's sake. Mm. They were supposed to, they thought they'd send me to Utah State or University of Utah or Brigham Young. But they sent me back, back somewhere else. Mm. Anyway, I enjoyed it and uh, enjoyed the career. And, my wife decided to marry me. <laughs> that's probably the best part, Yeah, that's right? the best part. Five kids, and uh, there's one, one of them is an Air Force pilot, and the other one was, uh, flew him a bit, and he was part of Air Force, and Air Force too. Yeah. So uh, it, was a, it was a great program. I love to fly. I've heard it said that you can take Gail Halverson out of the airplane, but you cannot take the airplane out of Gail Halverson. Well, my You're age. still flying, aren't I, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How uh, old are you now? Oh, I can't. What the heck? I'm 90, 96. 96, and really? you are still flying. Yeah, yeah 97. 97? Oh, Just ages a year. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so what are you flying? Well, we've got a group together, mm -hmm. uh, have had for uh, many years. Bought a, an Air, Air Force excess airplane, a four engine C 54, mm -hmm. like flew the airlift in. And uh, flew that to Europe a few years later. Uh, had a great, so I flew that a lot mm -hmm. and, and taught other guys how to fly it. Wow. And so it, uh, it's been a, aviation's been a blood since I thin sugar beets in the farm. A 12 year old kid looking up an airplane going, wow. Oh. <laughs> back to back to sugar beet. Yeah. So it, I was motivated, really motivated. Um, I, I need to bring up the fact that you have a project going on down at the Spanish Fork, Utah Airport. Mm -hmm. It's right here is the flyer for it. It's the Gail S. Halverson Aviation Education Center. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. The <clears throat> Gail S. Halverson Aviation Education Foundation well, and Center. I've got a farm in Spanish Fork, 50-acre mm -hmm. farm, and, uh, and of course, the uh, Spanish Fork is close to my heart. Sure. And they called me up one day and said, Alverson, uh, we want to make a, a, a scholarship program to teach 
guys how to fly. And I said, okay, I'm not a flight instructor, but I'm glad to help however I can. And uh, so they said, well, we want to do it. So we'll put out the information and, and we'll uh, set up a program for, for scholarship program for flight. And I said, that's super good. They said, we'll name it after you. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm a farm kid. <laughs> and I, they said, well, no, we're serious. And we're going to do it. And uh, they're, they're on the way. And uh, I'm excited. So what kinds of things will you be able to do at this center? Now, you mentioned the scholarships. Yeah. But what else? Are they going to actually teach young people how to fly? Yeah, they'll through the scholarship, they'll mm -hmm. make it possible for them to fly. And, uh, they go to a regular uh, flying school, and they might have one set up there, set up there in a Spanish fork, mm -hmm. and uh, with a qualified uh, flight instructor, and the kids will co compete for a scholarship. And I don't know how many they can afford, mm -hmm. but I'll sure support them. And excited, really excited about it. Holy cow! I grew up on a farm and hoeing sugar beets, thinning sugar beets. I don't know if I would ever even get up in the sky. And here they're going to make a scholarship and put kids in the sky in my name. I, I, I'm very humbly. I, I just I never got over that. For, for people who would like to donate to the foundation, how do they go about doing that? Well, that's a good, good question. They can contact me, mm -hmm. uh, Gail Halverson, uh, even just Garland, Utah, USA. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. We don't have the farm anymore there. I mean, that's an easy way to get a hold of me. But they still send the mail to you. Well, yeah, they can initially. We get set up, mm -hmm. and then we get a, a regular organization. That's the that's the goal. Mm. So I'm excited to get more people in aviation and and uh, tell the kids no matter how poor they are, they got a shot at it. We'll we'll also, by the way, make that available on our website. Oh, super! Uh, so that, uh, that folks can link over from fox13now.com. Oh, that's really and good. And then yeah, and then oh, they'll be able to oh, contact you as well. Gosh. We'll put your link up. Oh, that on fox our website. is incredible. Okay. Well, I've sure enjoyed talking with you. Well, we're not quite done yet. Oh, okay. I want to ask you just a few more questions. <clears throat> When you look at modern day aircraft and when you fly in a modern day aircraft yeah. and you look back and reflect on the beginnings of your uh, aviation career, yeah. how, what, how does that make you feel? The progression of technology yeah. from the days that you started oh. to where we are now oh, yeah. and beyond. Oh yeah, and then the days when I first started, the airplanes we flew were a, a small Cessna or, and uh, uh, a single ignition on the first ones, mm -hmm. double ignition on cylinders on the later ones. In case one quit, you wouldn't be a glider. <laughs> and and uh, oh, I, uh, I didn't have any money on farm kid and yeah. thin sugar beets for $15 an acre. Yeah. That would last me all year. But uh, and then they came through with a scholarship program, and I competed and got one of 10 scholarships the state of Utah. Mm -hmm. uh, I memorized everything. <laughs> and so I, I, I loved flying from watching it before I ever got in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now when you consider where aviation technology oh, is today. Unbelievable. Well, the problem was, you know, they didn't have enough regular officers that are dedicated to the Air Force of career. And after the war, they had a lot of temporary ones. I was a temporary one. Mm -hmm. And then they had a competition at the end. If you wanted to get a regular commission, apply and give us your qualifications. And I did, but I didn't have a college degree. I only went to Utah State for a couple of uh, terms before uh, I got called in. And uh, I, I applied for a, reg a regular commission to get that four year of education for two years. Mm -hmm. You had to get a four year degree in two years, going winter and summer, too. And I, so I, uh, I applied and got interviewed by a regular officer board, and they offered me a, a permanent commission. And well, that must just have like made your I'd heart been, leap. Oh, boy. Um, the old LDS kid, I thought, oh boy, here's a real benefit. Yeah. And uh, so they, they offered me a permanent commission and uh, sent me to school. I got a, uh, I'd always loved math and science and uh, 
they sent me uh, to the university and uh, uh, got a four-year degree in two years. Mm -hmm. Went summer and winter, and I had a, a wife, Alda Jolly, and married the girlfriend at Utah State just before I went in. And, and that, I didn't meet her later, but that's where I met her. And uh, she, she was a professional stenographer. Mm. And to get a four-year degree in two years going summers, I, I just wondered if they'd call me in back early. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, uh, and then and I chose aeronautical engineering. Yeah. I liked math and science, and, and, uh, and I'd just hand her a, a sheath of notes, raw notes that would come out beautiful. Yeah. It A's on the reports because well, of her doing that. You know what is so funny? I mean, we know you as the candy bomber, and yeah. we didn't realize there was a lot more to you than just a pretty face. Oh, yeah. They sent uh, me for a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering at the University of Florida. I put in for all the schools out west. Yeah. And they changed it. They changed the safe travel money or station change money. And go to the university had the, the program they qualified for. Mm. I couldn't complain about that, but it was hundreds of miles away from Utah, my hometown. And uh, so uh, University of Florida Gainesville. Yeah. It was a good school. And uh, we went there, and in two years, I got a, a bachelor's degree. They said, hey, you did pretty good, Alverson. You're good in math. How would you like to stay another year and get a master's degree? I said, Boy, that would be easy. I said, you bet. So I signed up for a third year. I was flying every month, too. Yeah. And I uh, signed up for the third year of master's degree in aeronautical engineering. And they said, that's great. And so they, I went in the R&D business and stayed in it. Mm. I kept flying, of course, but, yeah. but uh, the Air Force was good to me, and I, I, I worked really hard. Yeah, yeah, well, it sounds like it. It sounds I, like I it. I went to Bear River High School here. Bear River High School. Yeah, and, and it was a great school. Yeah. Science courses and math courses. Yeah. I took the best I could, yeah. and they had some great courses, and I give them credit for me getting in. Yeah. Well, it's clear that uh, there's a lot more to you than just your pretty face. Oh, well, so. <laughs> well I used to have hair, too. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it was uh, the, the jobs and research and development I had from then on. I designed the designer at, through the Air Force Systems Command, uh, worked on the Titan III. I was one wow. of the projects. The Titan III rocket. Yeah. And I, I, I was deep in the space program. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Were, were yeah. you thinking of becoming an astronaut at one point? Well, I thought about it. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was so tied up in my research development job, I said, well, I'll let somebody else do that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it was the Air Force was very good to me and uh, spent th over 30, a little over 30 years in the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. Flew a good bit of the time. When, when you think of what you did uh, in World War II and post-World War II yeah. over Berlin and, and some of the other places that you flew and dropped the candy, when you reflect back on that and you compare it to those pilots who were known as an ace or those who had flown so many missions, yeah. you know, bombing missions yeah. and that kind of thing, and you compare the status between you yeah. and those other pilots. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you ever say, you know what? Each one of us had our roles, yeah. and I am so glad that I got to drop candy instead of bombs. Yeah. You ever say that to yourself? Oh, yeah, I, of course. Uh, but I, uh, I found a, a satisfying job in their transport command. Mm -hmm. You know, they made fun of us guys. Uh, Flying uh, transport type operations and, and all critical cargo around the world. Sure. But uh, I, I didn't assign me there. The Air Force assigned me there. Yeah. And uh, I, en I enjoyed flying so much. I got a flight scholarship before the war for, for a private pilot license. So that's an indication how interested I was. Mm -hmm. And flying big airplanes, I love them. Mm -hmm. And the four engines of 54 was a great airplane. Nowadays, the idea of dropping candy to children in war-torn areas 
I mean, it's a distant memory from what you did yeah. uh, after World War II. Yeah. But when you think of other ways that all of us can serve, yeah. what advice would you give to us for those of us who would like to make other people's lives better? Yeah, I think that, uh, that first of all, it's essential to know how blessed we are to be Americans. This country was designed and made possible through the, uh, the deity and the heavenly direction to get us on our feet, to get us going. And uh, I, I just think that uh, the, the future's in the air and it's not going to change. And, and uh, the, the gratitude that I have for the, the government and making that possible for me to, to break loose and and get, get, get a, a degree in engineering, aeronautical engineering, mm. in two years, and a master's in three years, and work in the cutting edge of technology, farm kid, sending sugar beets growing up, and uh, designing rocket ships to outer space, weapons testing in outer space. And, uh, well, it's, it's a, a dream life uh, come, come true. And, the, the Air Force is concerned about people. And, mm -hmm. and the, some people don't realize the military is concerned about people, but you have to have a, 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 a basis of, of understanding how to carry out your mission, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and if if you get surprised, well, then you're not as expected. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, it's, it's not easy, but it's a wonderful uh, look back at the opportunities I had as an officer in the Air Force and the places were stationed with my family. Not all the places, but and those are long months, but, but the, in serving our country, we, too often uh, we lose track of what we've got here in America. That's unique. And uh, it takes care and keeping. Yeah. And uh, I was grateful for that part that I was able to play. I enjoyed it very much. I guess it takes uh, noticing those little opportunities to serve yeah. other people. Oh, absolutely. isn't that exactly what you exactly. did? Exactly. I got the prompting. The uh, 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 kids would come out. They'd let the kids come out the air base and the controlled in, uh, bus and bring them out and, uh, to the airport where I loaded the flour and and. Uh, dried out orange juice and mm. everything dried. Of course, water's heavy. They put water in Berlin. Mm. And the, the Air Force had a good program bringing these young people out in the bus and talking to the pilots while they unloaded the airplane. And uh, those kids just touched my heart. And I asked the first group I saw, well, when's the last time you had a candy bar? And the one, a couple of them said they never had a candy bar. Mm. And I said, okay, well, Watch this airplane, I'm going to drop something to you on the approach to the end of the runway. I didn't get permission, and that's not good yeah. for a regular officer. That's not How did good. they know you were coming? Well, I had come over the fix to Berlin, and they'd come around to land whatever airport we're on. Mm -hmm. and so just after I come over that fix, wasn't too far from the kids, I'll wiggle the wings of the airplane like that. And when you see that four-engine airplane, wiggle the wings, just watch that one. <laughs> and I uh, came back the next day, that night, I got this ration. I couldn't buy all the candy I wanted. Yeah. But I went to my cool pot and engineer and said, got to have your ration. What are you going to do, buy a camera on the black market? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to drop it to some kids. They you're crazy. I said, I know it. I won't blame you, but give me your ration. <laughs> so they gave me the ration, <laughs> and I had uh, two double handfuls of chocolate bars. And I thought, boy, him and him with that going 110 miles an hour would make the wrong impression. Yeah. So I tied Hanks, just broke it up in three, three different piles and, and tied three handkerchiefs, parachutes, large men's handkerchiefs, and rolled them up. And went up on the roof of the hangar in and tossed them out to how they'd open up the best. To test them. And then yeah. I'd roll them up the same way and came back the next day. And, and uh, it was a beautiful day came down the final approach, and I could see those same kids. They didn't tell another soul. Mm. Standing up in, next to barbed wire fence. A wiggle of the wings, and they just blew up. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And they watched 
There was an airplane flew over their head. And, wow. <laughs> and then they just cleared the fence and uh, made sure it was clear and, and uh, we wanted to get it in, in the dirt before the before the runway. Yeah. And uh, went overhang and so oh, I had a crew chief, sent a crew chief back. We were flying it, the co pilot. Crew chief back, flew with the escape hatches out, two on three on each side to pull out the flower dust and coal dust, keep gumming up the control system. And he's back there with a the big card, uh, board box and hand holes cut in the side to make sure it didn't lose the box. Yeah. And, and flew it up right against that that opening that flare shoot was out. And they just come streaming out and popping like popcorn. Oh, wow. And they made a quick turn and looked. I just see him. Oh, I just see him chasing that. And so uh, we can't get by all the candy we want. We couldn't. It's yeah. ration. Every week we get a small ration. So uh, the next week we did it again, and then I got a couple of buddies to give me the ration. And then uh, one day uh, after doing that, uh, about three or four times, I got called in when I landed. Colonel Hahn wants to see you right now, Halverson. And holy cow, the head guy. I flew for him in Mobile, Alabama, foreign transport before he went over the airline. So he knew you? He knew me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he didn't know me enough to the way of the regulation. <laughs> and he said, Alverson, what have you been doing? Said, Flying like mad, sir. He says, I know that. What else have you been doing? <laughs> and I knew he knew. <laughs> he chewed me out. And he says, you know, you're in the Air Force, buddy. And you just don't go around making your own regulations. And I said, I, I realize that. But if you'd met those kids when I did, you'd made a small exception. Yeah. And he said, finally what warmed up. So said, well, G Colonel Cassidy, the head man for the Air Force, for the airlift, Colonel Cassidy says, that's a good idea. Colonel Hahn, let him do it. <laughs> and he was recommending for a court martial. And he, uh, Colonel, well, Colonel Hahn was great too, 100% support. He was a lieutenant colonel and the boss, the big boss for the group was Colonel Cassidy. I flew for him in Mobile. He was their head man in Mobile. But uh, it, uh, well, I, I, I thought I had made a bad mistake there for a while. Well, it, but, it turns out that in this case, getting forgiveness was better than getting permission. Yeah, and sometimes you have yeah. to do that, but yeah. be very careful. <laughs> you got to be selective. You got to be very selective. Yeah, I, it changed my life. It got me, they yeah, gave me a regular commission. I was a regular officer then without a regular degree. Without yeah. a, so it got me a, a master's degree in aeronautical engineering and space program assignments. Couldn't have had a better life in the Air Force. Cutting edge of technology. Colonel Gail Halverson, United States Air Force, retired and the candy bomber. Thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Brings about great memories. Thank you so much. Thank you. Out of little things, Develop big things. Yeah, no kidding. Told that in church.